Hey everybody, this is Captain Frugal reporting for duty with my weekly comic book review for August 23rd, 2023. All right, thank you for everybody for joining. I will say I apologize. This video is getting out a bit late because, well, hard to do a video when you have no power. Unfortunately, our power went out and didn't come back until later today. Uh, so it went out yesterday. And so then I usually have all my reading done and I try to get the video up in the morning, have it done either the night before or uh, get it finished and done in, in the morning and it didn't happen. So for those of you new to the channel, I give you uh, my view on the comic books that I read. I didn't read them all, I only read what I could afford. And you're gonna hear my notes, there we go. And I give you my view with a score, with a quick review of it, a little bit of information about it, as well as information from League of Comics Geeks and compare their thoughts to mine. And speaking of that, I want you to compare your thoughts as well. So we're gonna dive right in. First one I wanna talk about is Dawn of DC Night Terrors, issue number four, 150 out of 165 liked it on League of Comics Geeks with 3.9 average rating. I gave it a 7.22, so I'm not too far from them. 7.22 out of 10, it makes sense. I'm gonna have a lot more in the average range you're gonna find usually around sevens, because it makes sense, seven is my average. Insomnia searches the nightmares of all the heroes for his precious nightmare stone and keeps on coming up empty clawed. Wesley Dobbs, Batman, and I must return to the haunted Arkham Tower to confront Insomnia. Who is that I? Well, it's Dead Man, right? <laughs> or whoever, whatever it is. It's a pretty interesting issue. Uh, it is written by Joshua Williams and artist Giuseppe Camicoli. I thought it had a good art. Yeah, I thought it's an interesting issue. It was better than I expected. Still, I, not something I think everybody needs to run out and get this mini series crossover event thing. But it's, it's pretty good, and I have to say, it's pretty good inspiration for an issue for a villain. So if you like this kind of thing, uh, it might be a good one for you, or if you're having a little bit of fatigue, it's okay to skip this one, really. You're not missing a terrible amount. So once again, it depends on how much you really want to dive into the comic books of Night Terrors. And speaking of Night Terrors more, we're going to talk about Night Terrors Titans number 2. I gave it a 7.1 out of 10. League of Comics Geeks gave it a 74 with a 3.2 average rating, 47 out of 64 like this. Once again, we're around pretty much the same ballpark. Titans together in terror. As a nightmare rages on and the monstrous versions of the team roam the halls of Titans Tower, a young girl finds herself trapped inside the building. How'd she get there? And what heroes can possibly save her? Well, here's it's an interesting one, I'll tell you that. That writer, Andrew Constant, did a good job, I think, on giving us a nice little twist on this one. And Mike Norton was the one of the artists, as well as Scott Galblinski, whatever, I butcher names. I apologize. Everybody knows me that knows I butcher names. It's no meanness intent. I do think there's an interesting twist in this issue with a new character, Joanne. Pretty cool little twist there. Decent art. Pretty good story. Uh, one of the better Night Terror stories, I would say, but still nothing really worth jumping in all in for if you haven't been into it yet. Now the next one, this one's a polarizing one, but I do think it's on the upswing. A little humor there, a pun intended, because it's the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 32. And on my notes, I got dyslexic at wrote 23. <laughs> I gave it a 7 out of 10. League of Comics Geeks said 113 out of 134 liked it, with a 3.8 average rating with a strong total of 85 which means yeah they they gave it a little higher i think than i did two of spider-man's villains are forming the deadliest team up he's ever had to face yeah not really i don't believe that but are they after spidey or is he just in the way to, of something bigger well i think you're gonna have to read to find out but i'm gonna tell you jonathan hickman wrote this uh as well as zeb wells artist patrick gleason uh how do i boil this down here marvel is doing everything they can to bury the punisher look at this panel here in this First of all, yeah, depending, I guess, on what take of Punisher you have, there might be some truth to this. But if you take the 616 Punisher, he's actually worked with Spider-Man very many times. So Spider-Man might not agree with his methods at all, but I really don't think he'd call him a villain. This is just good old Punisher, uh, Punisher, <laughs> good old Marvel trying to push Punisher down because, you know, they want to really eliminate that character of Frank Castle and move on. They've already done so much damage to him, it's pathetic. It's okay art in this story. It's just mid, though, and really, it's not enough, even though it's better than what we've gotten several issues ago, it's not enough to fix this Spider-Man mess that we've been given. It's going to take a lot, I think, to get people back to wanting to keep reading Amazing Spider-Man. They just did so much damage. 
All right, next one we're going to go with is Captain America Finale, issue number one. I gave it a 7.02. 50 out of 54 liked. It was a 3.8 average rating. Cap's final stand. Captain America takes his final stand against the Outer Circle, using information gathered from friends on the inside. Steve Rogers sets his sights on releasing the world from the Outer Circle's influence and ending the Sentry game for good. The explosive conclusion to the groundbreaking story of Captain America Central of Liberty is here. I don't think it's that groundbreaking of a story. I don't know. What did you think of this overall story? I thought it was okay, but that's about it. Writer J Jackson Lansing, writer Colin Kelly, artist Carmen Carnero. And so here's my overall thoughts. Here we are. We <sighs> Cap and Bucky, they deliver the villain to his cruel fate. I do have to say, I like that. I can truly say that this enemy is doomed. The, the writer seems in this issue to leave out individual freedom in the end. In the end rant panel, at the end of the story, uh, there's a, their thoughts on this overall. It's not actually inner part of the issue. And I think it goes a bit of a Marxist rant, if you will. Captain America is not a Marxist. Maybe I read too much into it. But Captain America is for individual freedom. He's not necessarily for everybody being able to gain everything. It's You have the individual opportunity to gain. And I think that's where these writers tend to really miss the mark in their rants when it comes to, com to Captain America. Yes, Captain America would definitely help others. But he also would tell you, you have to learn to do things and learn to do things yourself. It's not a, it's not a problem to ask for help and get help. But you have to be able to do something as well yourself. Stop with the Marxist messages. I mean, really, I, I don't 100% disagree with that message there at the end, but they tend to leave out personal responsibility all the time in these kinds of things. And that's what we got more of here. A little bit too socialistic in the end rant. The next one I want to talk about is Deadpool number 10. Before I get into Deadpool number 10, no, I'm getting into Deadpool number 10 right now. <laughs> I gave it a 6.9. I really, I didn't like it as much as a lot of other people did. League of Comics Geeks said 65 out of 66 liked it with a 4.3 average rating, higher than I gave it quite a bit. Heartbroken. Things aren't looking great for Dare, uh, Deadpool. I almost called him Daredevil. And his new paramour, Valentine. And you know how it can be uh, how it can be in love. You just want to be together. But there's always some secret society of killers that gets in the way. <laughs> well, it's a, you know, it's a goofy story. If you like Deadpool, you probably like this. The writer is Lisa Wong, artist Luigi Zagera, which I butcher, I apologize. We do have some gruesome panels. The art was okay, but it tends to lack a lot of detail. The ending, in my opinion, was rather anti-climactic and a little lame. That's one of the reasons I gave this a downgrade in score. But I also noticed this. Reading this issue, we once again have to focus on identity politics. Marvel can't help themselves with this. Ask yourself this before you get on me and call me all kinds of mean names. Was there any point in letting us know that she's non-binary that impacted the story? Having her be non-binary... How in any way did it change the story? And here's the thing, that if it did have a made a change, I could say, okay, no problem. But having that be a major, a big point brought up, and I wouldn't say big point, but they had to mention it several times, non-binary, it should have had some kind of impact in the story. But if you took that out, it made no change in the story whatsoever. So I gave the book a minus, a negative for that, because there was no point of putting it there. But other than politics, quit doing that. Just give us a good story. So they made a little bit of a mistake. Once again, if it was part of the story, maybe I would have been fine with it. But the point that it was thrust in there for no reason, adding no depth to the story, I just didn't get it. All right, but I do want to thank these people real quick here. I'm not going to shill too much on this one because I'm running really late on this video. But I want to thank these people here today for, for their help and their support with our Patreon and subscribe star. Without them, this channel would not be possible. All right, so now we're going to dump in, jump in, dump in. Boy, I cannot speak at this moment. I better take some drinks of my water. <laughs> we have Daredevil and Echo number four. I gave it a 7.01. 26 out of 33 liked it with a 3.3 average rating. Total score of 79, so a little higher than I gave it. The sins of the past are all alive and angry. Daredevil and Echo face not only the nefarious Demo Goblin, but a bigger wilder and much 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 older enemy one that has had his hooks in hell's kitchen for generations can these heroes defeat the villains well you need to read to find out the writer is taboo writer another one is b earl and artist phil noto and well the art needs to be better i think to be honest for this many series i mean we have a character like ghost rider you better draw him really awesome and it just didn't do it it came it comes out a little flat but it is a decent story but that's the thing. Everything in the book was just decent. Nothing really went quite great. 
I, I want that book, you know, again, that makes you go, wow, this is really good. And the only ones I seem to be getting that with right now is the World's Finest series when it comes to the major big two comic book uh, provide publishers. All right, so the next one, Invincible Iron Man number nine. I gave it a 7.2 out of 10. 65 out of 66 liked it with a 4.2 average rating for League of Comics Geeks for a total of 99. Tony Stark, Black, is a, an interesting character. And I think we get some of that insight of that character in this issue, and I enjoyed that. This issue, we have a lot of beaten up Tony Stark. His, his business is getting taken down. He's fighting back. And, but he's do, using every resource he can. And at the end, he taps into a resource that I want to get into because it's pretty cool. And I want you to see that for yourself. Writers, Jer writers Jerry Duggan. Artist, Juan Ferreri. Once again, if I put your name, I do apologize. Marvel writers do have to continuously throw in, though, their personal politics. And we have that here in this issue about global warming. Once again, if we took that topic, that, that line that was put there, and removed it from the book, would it make any changes? None. That's why I say it's bad. If it would have made something important, sure. But once again, had no point of being there. Once again, quit letting writers... Good editors need to do this. Good editors get in there. Quit letting writers put crap in there that doesn't belong. Whether you believe in it or not. I don't care if I believe in it or not. I don't think it needs to be in there. That's the thing. But I will say, though, the story is pretty good. And it's decent art, too. So really, it helps overcome some of those problems. It's still been a good series, and I still can recommend uh, the Iron Man books right now, the Invincible Iron Man. So I think that says a lot. Uh, at least you can do in that, but come on now. Let's, let's go a little bit better and quit doing those things that don't need to be in there. Got two more to go. We have Moon Knight, City of the Dead, number two. I gave it a 7.5. We're 47 out of 49. Liked it on League of Comics Geeks with a 4.2 average rating. I thought it had decent art, good story, brutal Moon Knight action, and Moon Knight, this seems to be a pretty interesting book continuing on. I, I, I do I do like it. I, I think if you're a Moon Knight fan, you'd like this series too, because tearing through the center of the uh, City of the Dead on his quest to rescue a young runaway, Moon Knight must grapple with his past when he turns to an unlikely source of aid. And that's all I'm going to tell you, but it brings up a character from his past, lots of people that he is putting down, taken down. It's going to be an interesting read if you haven't read it. Writers David Propose. Penciler Marcello Ferrari, and I think you should be checking out. I have been enjoying the Moon Knight books lately, and I think you could too. And the last one was Venom number 24. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. 60 out of 62 liked it, a 4.2 average rating on League of Comics for Geeks. And I think I'm geeked out a little bit because it has, yeah, it has Doctor Doom in it. Prepare to meet your doom. <laughs> Doctor Doom is the most notorious and ambitious supervillain in the Marvel Universe, and he's got something Eddie Brock needs. What could it be? Yep, we're going to get that. Eddie Brock is going to go and see Doctor Doom because he's looking for something in particular so he can fix what's been going on. Writers Al Ewing, Penciler Sergio, Sergio, Sergio <laughs> Fernandez de Villa. Once again, I apologize for butchering names. Uh, not bad. I, I do like the last couple issues of Venom. I think it's been a, a bit of an upswing in my opinion, but I'm still not the biggest Venom fan. But maybe you are. All right, well, that's what I read. I went over it pretty quick today, as I said, a little bit behind trying to play catch up because I have a lot to do because the power being out for the last day has really put me behind on things to get done. But here's the thing. If there's other books I really should have read, even though I'm behind on the time, let me know. And let me know your thoughts, too. Where was I right? Where was I wrong? And you know what? Let's bring it back to like it used to be. Let's be kind to each other. Let's share our views on comic books and understand that, yeah, we can have differences and that's okay. All right, everybody, you take care. Until next time, keep it.